Hey guys, Obelisk here with another installment to my Dayak um, overview video series. Um, today, we're not really going to be talking about classes. Um, however, we are going to be talking about um, Qbinds, um, your keyboard setup, and things like that. Ways to make you more uh, more efficient as a player. Um, and this is this is probably one of the, the biggest ways you can improve your gameplay um, and your skill cap is by by looking at things like this. Um, it can be quite difficult to change, especially when you're looking at your keyboard layout, because you're probably using a keyboard layout that you've used for years. Um, it's it's muscle memory at this point. Um, like when you hit stick, um, face, things like that, you're not even thinking about those. But when you change those those keys, it gets you have to actually think about what you're doing for the first couple of days, and then it becomes muscle memory. Um, that transition period, those growing pains, can turn a lot of people off and make them go back to what they were originally doing. Um, even though, or even if the uh, the keyboard setup they're trying to transition to is much better and will allow you to be a, a much more mechanically efficient player when it comes to um, cue binds and character movement and things like that. So, um, reasons you would do this is just to create more cue bind space. Um, which is very important because considering the amount of abilities that are in Dayak nowadays, um, I'm going to show you my bard. I'm probably going to run through. Um, I'm probably going to set up my bards, quick bars, completely as well um, at the very end of this video. It might be a long one, so um, skip around if you're not interested in certain things. But um, yeah, I might even show you. I have like 50 something cubines in my bards. It's insane. Um, but in order to be able to efficiently get to all those spells and abilities, you have to really really have a thoughtful um, keyboard setup. So we're going to go into that. Um, first, I'm going to go into game and talk a little bit about Qbinds um, because that's a that's a really important thing that some people might not know about. Um, I was in my friend Jim Lee's stream the other night and someone didn't know um, what a Qbind was, that they could do that. They didn't even realize it was a thing. So I'm going to talk about it real quick. Maybe, uh, maybe it'll help some people. Um, it's a really great way of um, remapping, I guess, certain abilities to certain keys on your keyboard. So let's uh, let's hop into game here. Let's see. Let's get into an actual game. So to create a Qbind, let's see. To create a Qbind, actually, what I'm going to do is Q unbind all. I'm going to completely clear my bards, quick bars, real quick, just so we can kind of. Let's see. Let's just get rid of all this. Don't need any of this. No, 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 no. Sorry, I should have done this beforehand, but I didn't. So, so we're just clearing up my bards, cubines, because I'm going to completely rebind this thing um, for you guys, so you can see kind of. Um, I'll show you my keyboard setup, and then on a high ability, high uh, item type um, classic like bard, we'll, we'll, we'll set it up. So. Let's say I want to make my AOE mez my E button, for example. So let's let's go let's start here. So let's go into my my uh, music line. Let's grab AOE mez and let's put it on bar one or quick bar one. So you can see here I'm on my main quick bar. We're on. Let's actually go to page seven. So I'll scroll into page seven. Grab my mez, throw it on E. And so right now to cast this, I, I need to press my E button or my, my sorry, my three key on um, quick bar or quick page, quick bar one, page seven. I want to make it E. So to do that, I would type slash Q bind seven, which is the page of the quick bar. So page seven, um, three, which is slot three and then one. So this one right here at the end, the third number, is the quick bar I'm doing. So there's quick bar one, there's quick bar two, and quick bar three. So here's quick bar two. I don't have a quick bar three. Um, so, this, so this is my alt bar, my quick bar three would be my control bar. But um, so this this is how I would bind it. I would type in this. Um, so cubine slash cubine seven, like I said, page seven, slot three, quick bar one. Hit enter. If you can see here, recording key press for uh, bank seven slot three quick bar one. And then I simply just, the next key I press is gonna be the key at key binds two. So I press E. So key E uh, bound to bank seven slot three. Um, let's put root on W. So let's grab my root, where is it? There it is. So I'm gonna slash Q bind seven space two. And if you're Q binding on your main bar, your bar one, 
you don't have to put that third number. It's going to assume you're, you're cue binding off of your main bar. So that's normally where all my cue binds go. I normally don't put anything on my second quick bar and then cue bind it. So seven space two, hit enter, and then the next key I press is going to be the key it binds to. So then I'm going to press W. So now my W is root and my um, three is a mess. So we'll go to these test dummies, make sure you can see it in frame. So I'll cast, I'll press three, or sorry, E, as you can see here. So I'm pressing E and now it's using my AOE mess. And I'll even go back to page one. So it's not on my you know main quick bar at all. So I'm pressing E and it's messing. Now I press W and it's gonna, eight, or it's gonna single target root. So if you can see that. So that's that's where cubines come into place. So in order, like if, in order to get a lot of cubine space, you need to remap your keyboard a bit probably to open up this area because probably right now you have a lot of a lot of these buttons right here probably do a lot of things if you're running on the default layout or if you haven't really had a, a think about your your setup um, so let's go ahead and get into um, some important some important some really important uh i guess actions that need to be bound and to cube or to, to set up your keyboard in game you like type just simply slash keyboard Oops. And then that brings up the screen right here. So what I'm going to do, I made this little list of very important things that need to be bound. Um, we'll start with movement. So your mouse look. So some people might move with their arrow keys like this, which is how I moved when I started playing the game for a few years. It was a uh, you know, I just didn't know there's another way to move. That was just kind of how the game came, so that's what I did. However, this way of moving is super, super inefficient. And I'll, I'll do an example. We'll have it on auto run. If I wanted to do a 180 turn, that's what, like three seconds, two and a half seconds to turn. So to do a 180 turn, that's you know, like I said, two and a half seconds. That's not good. Um, if you see a full group coming at you and you're like a two man and you need to turn around real quick, that's not how you want to do it. In a fight, you need to be moving around really fast. That's You're gonna have to do something a little bit quicker. In order to do that, you're gonna have to use mouse look. And we'll go down here to, uh, I guess it's camera, not movement. Sorry, camera in the uh, slash keyboard settings. And we'll find mouse look. How I set that is I set it to my right click button. And actually before I go on, I wanna just bring up a point about your um, computer peripherals, things like keyboards and mice, things like that. Um, now it does help definitely to have a nice, especially a nice gaming mouse. It's not necessary at all, but um, for example, I use this Logitech, I think it's a G600, I'll pull it from this camera. It has 12 buttons on the side and two up here and then one extra right here. Now that that's a ton of buttons. Um, this might not be for everyone, but I would recommend um, getting a, a nice gaming mouse with at least two or three buttons on the sides. They're going to help a ton. The mouse feels like these nice, these, these mice are nice, so they feel good. They're quick. You can send them to any speed you want. They're light. Um, for example, this, this Logitech I bought for like 50 bucks when it was on sale on Amazon. I think they're normally around like 70. It's kind of expensive for a mouse, but it's well worth it in the end, in my opinion, especially if you spend a lot of time playing games. Um, well worth the investment. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Um, not saying you have to get it or it's necessary, but I would look into it. Now I'm going to create this setup with the assumption that you have a mouse, not like this, but a mouse that has a couple buttons on it that you can use to bind. Um, now I, my, my, my setup's going to be a little bit different than what we're going to do here, but for the purpose of this video, um, we're going to use a, a setup with a, a couple mouse buttons um, and just do an example keyboard setup. So back to it, mouse look, very important. So what I use for mouse look is right click. So to move, I hold down my right click button, if you can see here, and then I move my mouse. And that just swings my character around. I can look up, I can look down, and I can turn around. Put it on auto run or any sort of move forward, and then we're moving. So this is how we turn. So that's a uh, that's the most efficient way and quickest way to turn. Um, so if you're arrow turning, um, I, it's probably due time that you transition to mouse turning if you're interested in upping your game a little bit. Um, so next we'll go to mouse pan, works the same way. I put it as middle mouse, some people use left click. I like middle mouse, it's just preference, I guess. Um, what this does is you hold down your middle mouse button 
which is this key or this little button right here and then you just turn your mouse same thing except for it doesn't turn your character it just turns your camera so that's a uh, instead of holding down I think they're the way I used to pan like 15 years ago was I held down my tilde button and I used my arrow keys and that turned my camera very slowly this is the way to do it you can also zoom in by holding down uh, your, your pan mouse pan button and using your scroll wheel that zooms in and out um, reset camera it's a little down on the list over here but we're gonna go ahead and set it since we're here I put my reset camera key on my mouse you can put it somewhere on your keyboard um, I, I wouldn't put it somewhere in a really good spot and, and let's just look at the keyboard real quick just look at this cam so this is where my hand sits so I want these buttons in here to be open for cubines, open for really important things, things like movement, um, abilities, um, as sick face things you're going to be using all the time. So this is a very, cause this is where your hand sits. So your hand should never really leave this position. You can, you know, shift it a little bit around the keyboard, but you never want to like, you know, completely come over here or leave your or take your hand off the mouse. You want to have these pretty much central there. So let's just, go with that um i guess philosophy um assuming that's the best i mean that's i think that's the most efficient you know if you have to move your hand over here you're not going to be accurate um, you're gonna have to look down at your keyboard to see where you are so staying around this area is probably the best bet for overall efficiency with your your hands and your your mind and your eyesight it's not taking focus away from the game so next we have forward and backwards so for me to move forward i hold down left and right click um so that's literally, I'll, I'll use my big camera, just holding down these two buttons right here. So I, I click them both at the same time and that moves me forward. So I only do this when I'm breaking stick or face. So you see I'm facing this, uh, this master eldritch over here. And in order to uh, break stick or face, I have to hit forward in order to auto run. So that's how I'm always moving, I'm always auto running. So in order to break stick or face, I have to uh, hit my forward key, which is left and right click. I use it for like literally half a second and then I hit auto run, which for me is my space bar. So that's how I move. I always am auto running and then in order to break stick and face, I click left and right click. <clears throat> if you're not big into auto running, if you want like a forward key on your keyboard, um, say um, you just, you're a tank player or something and you just like the controls of you know being able to constantly hold down the forward key and then let go of the forward key when you need to for some reason what i would do in this particular setup is i would have um, the forward key be spacebar and then maybe put auto run as like shift space or something like that if you're using um if you like holding down the forward key because if you're holding down the forward key and you're using styles and stuff like that, you want to be able to um, get to those styles without lifting up off your forward key. So having your thumb on space, which I'm currently holding down, as you can see there, and then I can, I can reach all around here. So I have a lot of potential um, buttons to press here. So I would use space as uh, my move forward key if you're not into auto running. Personally, me, I, I, I auto run um, when I'm on a tank and I'm running next to someone. I'm always auto running. I'm never holding forward. But teach their own, I suppose. But I'm going to clear that because we're going to use space for our auto run. Um, backwards, I like F as my backwards key. Backwards is a really important key for me, especially when I'm on tanks. Um, it allows me to, um, when I'm <clears throat> like soloing or small manning, keep people in front of me, just constantly keep people in my frontal arc, uh, especially if they're trying to run through me a lot. Um, even in groups, I'm trying to get positionals off. Um, someone's trying to circle straight me or something, I just use my F key to back up. Uh, next on the list is auto run and I already mentioned that I put that on space and like I said that's how I move all the time I never hold down my forward key I'm always auto running and I just use my forward key to break um, stick or face so next we have let's see stick and face these are these are two big ones so this is where the mouse comes into play um, I changed my stick and face to uh, my mouse key um, probably about eight years ago and it's, it's great because if you're on a caster and then um, say you need to mez something, like let's go to these, these test dummies real quick. So say I need to mez the test dummy and my face, for example, is on F1, for example. 
we'll we'll just well i can't really demo it but so face is on f1 in order to stop my character and then hit face i'd have to hit f1 and then say my my single target mes is d so let's go ahead and cubine that to d seven four d okay so now i want to mes this guy and f1 is my face key so what i have to do is i have to hit f and then come down to d so I, I'm, I'm moving my hand quite a lot there to where if it's on my mouse, let's say, um, let's see, let's bring it up here. My face key is going to be this button right here. All I have to do, I can hit those pretty much at the same time without moving my hand around. So I can do that. So I don't have to do that motion. My thumb's already there. I can, if you see my thumb press and then this, my index finger or my pointer finger on my uh, left hand, hit them pretty much at the same time. It's just a quicker way. It's not necessary if you don't have a mouse with buttons on it, but this that's what I would do. If not, maybe look at putting face on like R, that's a decent key, or even um, like a F or a D or something. And you can, you'd have to move your back key at that point, but have face very convenient to the rest of your keyboard, but especially if you're, uh, you play a lot of casters because that's such an important key. Stick, same thing. I, uh, so let's see, put face there and then stick. I put on my mouse as well. And if you see end and home, those are remapped from my mouse. Um, so my mouse is actually hitting M and home. Um, so that's how those, those work. But stick, same thing. Um, I just like being able to have both my stick and face on my mouse. Um, it's not 100% necessary. It's just something that I think makes you a little bit more efficient, more a little bit quicker a lot of the times. Uh, next, reset camera. We already set that. Did we? We didn't set that, I'm sorry. Let's go back to camera. No, I did, I did set that, sorry. Uh, I forgot. Uh, the next big thing that we need to look at is nearest enemy. But before that, we just talked about our movement. Let's go back to movement and look at strafes. Um, now, strafe left and right, they are useful. Um, I don't use them a ton. If I'm, if I'm soloing or if I'm on a tank and trying to run through and get side styles or back styles off, I'm not, I'm not using my strafe keys. One, because when you're strafing in combat, that's really tricky. You could fumble a lot. Two, I just don't think that's the best way to like to go for side stuns. Um, the best way, in my opinion, is to uh, run through at an angle and then face or stick. So what I would do, for example, let's get a better angle. I want to I want to side stun this guy. I'd run like that. So I, I I don't really use my my strafe keys for that, but they are useful sometimes. Um, so I do have them on my quick bar. However, I have them kind of out of the way. I have them at G and F. So they're accessible, but they're not, they're not, it's not prime real estate on my keyboard. So I can, if I'm backing up and wanting to strafe, I can do that number. If I'm wanting to, you know, strafe around forward, I can hold down left and right click and then strafe forward. If I want to just stick someone in strafe, there you go. It's just moving my index finger. It's then I have to kind of reposition these fingers to hit my Q W E R one, two, three, four. So let's see. Next is nearest enemy. Sorry, let's go back to that. So that's going to be where is it targeting? Nearest enemy. Now this is a this is a big one because sometimes the easiest way to target someone quickly is nearest enemy, and I like to put it as tab. It's a great uh, convenient spot, especially if you keep your hand in this area of the keyboard. So it's just a, a quick quick way to target. Um, sometimes it's going to be hard to mouse target someone if they're on top of you or something. You have to you might target yourself. You might miss. Just with the push of a button, you're targeting. Um, it can get a little dicey. Don't don't rely on tab target or nearest enemy targeting all the time, um, because sometimes it'll, it'll get you a different target than you want. You might get up like a brutal guard or something instead of the person. But in a pinch, it's a great way to target quickly. So those are all of the the really key key uh, actions that we need to bind. And now we'll go through some of the I guess the um, the lesser necessary or necessary. Uh, buttons we'll, we'll just start at the top here and, th and and once we get done i'll show you what cubines this leaves open and then we'll get into cubining this bard up and that might take a little while and I'm, 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 i might not go completely in depth but we'll get all the main stuff down so we have our our forward backward our strafes we don't need to turn left or right you can put them at left and right on your oops on your um, arrow keys down here but never use these in a fight. They, sh you know, they're just so slow and inefficient. Um, 
Next is jump. Now, this is something a lot of people like a lot. I mean, I, I jump all the time. My jump is A. Um, if you're not a big jumper, um, it's kind of a, a useless thing to do outside of some terrain you need to jump to get over it or obviously to go up in water. Maybe set is shift A. It's still really accessible, but it's you're not you're not giving up a, a great key like A. A is a really I mean it's prime real estate, especially when your hand's right here. Like your pinky's next to it, your end, or your ring finger's next to it. You wanna you wanna have that spot open. So I would probably if you're going from scratch, rebind my jump to shift A. And for down, let's just go shift Z. Keep it simple. It's right under A. Um, it's not taking up a great cubine like Z. Z is a really good cubine, but it gives you um, <clears throat> quick access to going down and wire to be able to dive. Sit, I have is shift B. Um, kind of out of the way, but still semi convenient. Um, if you find yourself wanting to use shift B as a shift B, sorry, as a cubine later, you can always move this to like shift M since it's not really that important at all to be able to sit quickly. Walk, unbound, space, run lock we have. Sprint. Oh yeah, sprint. Sorry, we missed that earlier. Sprint's very important. Um, I put it as tilde or tilde right here. Just because um you're all, on any class, sprint's so important. If you're casting for a few seconds and you stop sprinting. Yeah, tank runs at you, you need to start running away and sprint immediately. So you want to have that as close as possible, very accessible. So I have that as tilt. It's just a, a short reach to the, the top corner of this area of the keyboard. And that's going to do it for our, uh, our movement. So we'll go into combat. Right-handed weapon. I have his F9. Oops. F9. Uh, Two-handed weapon, F10. So the reason I have those there is I, I, I obviously don't come up here and press those. Um, if you're using something like auto hotkey, which is something that kind of re helps remap your keyboard, it's a, uh, a script based program. It's a, um, it's a, it's technically a macro program, but it binds two actions to one key per one character, which is legal according to, uh, to broadsword. Um, so if you're using that, I like to, to use these. Um, however, a lot of the time, if I'm playing a character that I want to manually swap, I'll Q bind those elsewhere. Like I'll probably put those on my mouse. Um, but if you're using auto hotkey, that's the, those are the keys I key into auto hotkey and they just out of the way. So attack mode, I have his V it's a, it's an important, um, a pretty important action because it puts your weapons away. Say I melee in, uh, I melee in some, someone melee in this, uh, master Eldritch and another bard's like, Hey, mezzing master Eldritch. I want to put my weapons away real quick. So I don't break the mez. So I just hit V you can also hit escape. And it's going to put your weapons away, but you'll also lose the target. So I like I like I like V. I like just putting the weapons away, nice and simple. Um, it's also good if you're on a class that doesn't have any like CL styles or any sort of combat styles, and you need to melee something real quick. That just pulls out your weapons. You can interrupt or do whatever you need. All right, next, let's go back to targeting here. Uh, last attacker. This is a this is a pretty important one that might be underused. I put that shift tab because. Tab is my nearest enemy. Shift tab is a good cubine, but I think this warrants that space. Shift tab. Um, and that's because, say I'm in a fight and I have maybe their healer target or something. I'm, I'm mezzing their healer, erupting the healer or whatever. And then some RM or SM gets open and starts nuking me. And maybe I don't know exactly where in the fight that's happening because it's, it's a chaotic fight. There's a lot going on. If I want to instantly target the guy nuking me, I can hit shift tab that's my last attacker and i'll instantly target them and then i could face them find out exactly where they are and then throw an instant amnesia and insta dd insta mez whatever on them and completely stop erupting them um, this is just a great way of quickly um, being able to react to getting damaged um, so i use this quite a lot actually especially when i'm finding like archers scouts rangers things like that things that just pop out by nowhere um just last attacker them also, it's useful if you're running around and say you're fighting, you're, you're in a two man, you're finding another two man, they sauced away, they disappeared, you have no clue where they are. Um, you can you can spam your last attacker button and it'll say um, probably last attacker is not in range if they're not in a certain radius. And if they are, it'll give you their target. You might not be able to face them, but you'll know they're close. Um, if it says last attacker not in view, that means they're close, but there's some sort of terrain blocking you from being able to to view them. So that kind of gives you a heads up of like where your enemies are. Um, great way to kind of figure out what's going on. Ground target, shift G. That's out of the way, but still relatively accessible if you need a quick ground target. 
Um, these targeting, like target group number one, two, three, four, five, all the way to eight. These are super, super good in my opinion. They're very underused. Um, even a lot of the top tier players don't use these. I guess they just think they can't find space on their keyboard for them. But if you can get used to using these things, it's insane. And I'm gonna come back to these in a, in a later point in this video. But let's go ahead and finish this. And then I'm probably gonna set up the Bard, um, all those quick bars and stuff. And then I'm gonna revisit this. So if you're interested in this, it's probably gonna be near the end of the video. So just scroll around if you're um, if you're jumping around and you'll, you should find this near the end. Uh, these interaction things, they're not important. Just put them wherever. Um, don't put them anywhere anywhere good. So like destroy, you know, you can put that at like shift O or something. Oops. Um, open select, you don't need that. Um, get item, I use this as backspace. That's my, that's how I get on a boat. So I click on the boat and then I press get, I press uh, get item or backspace instead of double clicking it. It's just a, better way of getting on the boat in my opinion more uh more reliable i guess so let's just do like shift l um just get them out of the way because they're not they're not relevant buttons for for fighting which is what you need um your most convenient things to be on i uh, reset camera we got that we got all this this is all good um look up actually I, I do actually, these are, I, I never use control keybinds uh, just because I, I generally don't need them. I have a lot of keybind space otherwise. Um, so I have these as control S and X and they're normal form. They don't do anything because you can just do it with your mouse. But when you're holding down your mouse pan button, so I'm holding down my middle mouse and I hit look up or look down, it actually moves my camera up and down. So that's a good way. Of, I always like my camera set as high as it goes. So I, I have my camera set just at the top. I think it's normally like this though. So you're kind of middle on your character, but I like to set my camera up there. And then you type slash set camera and it sets camera in whatever position you're in. Just a tip. Uh, chat, um, page up, page down. I just, they're on these keys, they're out of the way, whatever. Reply, I think if you shift, shift Y maybe. And chat logging, if you need to chat log items or something that's over here, out of the way. Um, shift Y, if you like that keybind, move this somewhere else. It's not a super important key. Uh, the show stuff, I never use any of these. Um, if you need to get to your inventory quickly and you don't want to like click up here, maybe set this as a key. Um, I wouldn't use anything to, uh, don't use a, a good key for it though, unless you absolutely need to for some reason. Torch, like Shift P. Um, don't use any of this. I just have to set up elsewhere. Actually, Delve, Shift I, maybe. Uh, map, you can do like shift M, real more map, shift N, and that's it. So that's, that's my, that's a good key. That's not my personal keyboard setup. It's very, very, very close. There's a couple changes, but, and that mostly has to do with this mouse. Um, so what we have actually on this mouse, we only have three things, stick, face, and reset camera. What you could do is you could put reset camera on Y or T if you wanted to. Cause it's not, it's not that much of a crucial key. You can always pan back manually, but sometimes it's nice to just quickly reset. Um, so if you don't have a nice mouse, you can maybe look at putting that reset camera button elsewhere and we'll find it real quick just to show you. Yeah. Reset camera right here. If you don't have a good mouse and you need to find a place for stick and face, think of like R and T maybe, or R and F or R and G or you're gonna have to move some stuff around, but, um, or even like, Q and A or something like that if you really wanted to. That's a that's a decent spot. But if you have a gaming mouse, I strongly recommend putting stick and face on your <clears throat> on your mouse. Anyway, so that's mostly that. And what I'm gonna do real quick, sorry, give me one moment. I'm gonna back up my current keyboard setup so I can go ahead and confirm this one. Where am I? Actually, let's let's talk about key targeting real quick. And let me log in a different character here. It is. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's grab a heal off. Let's grab our greater heal. Let's throw it on Q. So seven one Q. Okay. So now my Q greater heals. So. I want to set my key targeting 
And what this does is it allows me to target group mates with a keystroke instead of having to click them in my healer's helper. So what I do is I have a, uh, I guess there's, there's uh, two rows, two by four, I guess is what it would be. So if you can see my healer's helper down here, this is how it is. So there's, there's two rows of four. So what I do is I have, I take two rows on my keyboard of four keys and I set them correlating to, uh, to these. So it's, I use, let's go ahead and set them up. Alt Q, Alt W, Alt E, Alt R, Alt A, Alt S, Alt D, Alt F. So that's a, that's a nice block on my keyboard. A, uh, you know, two rows of four, um, little block on my keyboard. And what I do is I, I press to example, target the second member, which is this champion of my group. I hit Alt W and it targets him. So say I'm running around and he starts taking damage. He starts getting nuked. If I wanted to heal him, traditionally, what I would probably do is I would click him, face him, heal, right? So I'm off doing something. I'm repping this, this Eldritch or whatever, yada, 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 hitting some instances on him. My champ starts taking damage. I have to take my mouse, look at my healer helper, look at my mouse, where my mouse is, find it, and then move it down there. It's going to take about, you know, half a second, you know, maybe, maybe a quarter of a second, sometimes maybe even longer. Um, if you misclick or something and then hope he's not dead by then before I heal him. Now, if I key target him, what I would simply do is hit Alt W Q, Alt W face Q. And that's pretty much instant. So I don't have him targeted, Alt, Alt W um, face and then heal. I'll do it again, have the master elders targeted. I target my champ and then I'm, I'm there pretty much not instantly, but as, as fast as you can pretty much way, 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 way faster than dragging your mouse down, clicking him, and then healing. This, in my opinion, clicking your group mates through your healer's helper is the equivalent of clicking, um, almost is the equivalent of clicking your heal button on your quick bar instead of using a, a bind or something. It's almost like clicking spells because you're, you're literally clicking something. It's, not, it's just clicking to target um, rather than clicking your, your abilities. Same, same concepts, it takes the same amount of time. So if you can, why do it? So if you have the space, which with this setup you definitely do, um, maybe look at look at adding these. This is going to help you a ton. Um, it's great for support players. It's really good even for bodyguards. Um, so that way you don't have to run up and click the guy. Maybe he has three tanks on him. It's hard to click him because there's a lot of stuff on him. Let me move this out of the way. Move to this side. And I want to target him real quick to bodyguard him. I have to click through those tanks, target his character, or I come down here and target him in the group window. When I could simply just hit Alt 2 and then hit my nearest enemy, slam one, peel one, um, and target the other one, slam and peel him, and not have to worry about targeting my, my friend with my mouse. I can you know, just Alt 2 or Alt 1 or whatever, whatever uh, group member he is. So let's, let's think about using those if we can because that's um, it's just a really, really strong, really strong thing. So. You can put them anywhere. You can have them as Control Q W E R whatever. You can even have them as Shift if you if you want to. But I think Shift Q binds are better served for other spells. Um, and modified Q binds like Shift Q binds, Alt Q binds. That's when you just hold down a modifier such as Shift Alt or Control, and then you press a key following it. And I'll show you how to do some Alt and Control and Shift uh, Q binds as we go, because I, I definitely use some on Bard. So one second, let me back up my user dot dat, which is my keyboard setup, keyboard layout really, really quick. And then we'll get on with setting up the bards key lines. Let's see, come on. One second guys. In there anyway we'll go ahead and start filling up the bar so we, we already started here and these are these are something these are the buttons i would use or something similar to this um there we go add data let me grab these real quick and then i will be good to go okay so let's go ahead and lock in these changes so boom all right now, let me go ahead and fix my screen because I'm zoomed in so you can see the Q 
concubines. There we go. Nope. That's not it. Let me fit the screen. There we go. Okay. So let's set up how we would normally. Also, your UI layout's important in my opinion, just because you want as little clutter as you can while still being able to see everything that's important. Uh, maybe I'll do a different video on UI layout later, but we'll get into that. All right, so my main Qbound pages are seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's where I put all my spells that are Qbound. Sometimes I'll use six as well, uh, depending on if it's a, a very uh, high ability based class. Okay, so we have our greater heal already bound. We have, let's go and put my heart back on. We have our single target root. Let me go ahead and duel my champion so we can test these out. All right, so let's test out the, the single target mez. All right, single target mez works. That's D, if you remember. So my single target mez is D. My AOE mez is E. My single target root is W. If you remember, we bound these earlier. And my greater heal is Q. So if you ever want to check what Q binds, maybe you forgot what Q binds um, you bound to what, what keys, you can type slash Q bind and it's going to open up the screen. Might be a little difficult for you to see here. We'll see. Um, but pretty much what it says is quick bar one, bank seven, slot one, and it says Q. So then you can go to your quick bar seven, bank one, and find out what spell is Q. Oh, it's my greater heal. Cool. All right. Now let's continue adding some spells. Let's go through a music line, see what we have here. Um, lullaby, your AOE lullaby. Let's put that right here on slot five, slash cubine seven, five. Let's put it on R, all right? Let's do the, the single target one, the gray one, level two, slash cubine seven, six, and then we'll hit T. So my amnesia, my AOE amnesia is on R. My single target amnesia is on T, resisted there and then fired. So there we go. All right, let's do Dimez. That's very important. So we'll put Dimez on seven. Shkubine seven, seven, and let's put it on Z. So my Z is now my Dimez. All right, what else do we have here? Confuse. This is great for killing Thurg pets. If you don't know how Confuse works, I have a Confuse video. If you don't know how Amnesia works, I have an Amnesia video. It's also combined with that Confuse video. Shows you how to kill Thurg pets with Confuse, things like that. So go check that out. Uh, anyway. Quick bar seven, slot eight. Let's put that as X. Let's see. So this, boom. All right. Now, let's see. Let's take Crescendo and let's say cube on seven, nine. Let's put that on shift R. Because that's a, that's a reuse, you know, that's a, what is a uh, 45 second reuse timer. So I'm not going to be spamming that. So shift R, that's an easy cue going to hit, but it's not one of my main ones. It's not something I'm going to be spamming. You know, that's something I'm going to be you know, casting real quick and then I'll be done with it for 45 seconds. All right. So that's there. All right. Now let's go ahead and clear out these music lines. So let's swap back to page one. So this is the page that's always going to be showing. Um, so these are going to be my one, two, three, four, five, things like that. Um, things I want there are my two instant DDs on one and two. So I'll just be pressing one and two on these. So what I like to do, my, my general concept is to put timered abilities on my quick bar, visible on my visible quick bars, and then I use them on you know one, two, three, four, whatever. So um, for example, these two DDs, I need to see when they're up. Right now they're down, obviously you can see, um, but they're not Q bound, they're just at one and two. And I also put my instant mes there. One thing also, and my amnesias are obviously hidden and they're, they go on cooldown, but this one's up every five seconds and this one's up every 10. I kind of keep track in my head, my amnesia rotations. Um, but if I, if I want to see the timers, what I'll do is I'll take them. I'll put them on my second quick bar at, you know, maybe at the bottom here. Things, obviously I'm not clicking all nine and 10, but it's just, they're there for me to see the timers. I'm not using them at all, but they're just, they're just visible cues there. So I have my instant mez on three, my AOE instant mez, I should say. And I have my single target instant mez on four. And there we go. All right, what else do we have? Anything else here? Do we hit it all? We'll get back to our buffs and stuff later. Let's just focus on our combat abilities and then I'll, I'll bind our buffs in a second. All right, regrowth, things that are important. All right, 
um, cure disease. Let's go ahead and start on page eight. Cure disease is gonna be slash so keybind eight one. Let's put that on A. So my A is my cure disease, and then my Q is greater. So if someone gets disease, they're dying. I can quickly, you know, just hit them with a the face and then cure disease and then spam graders on them. So it's a good um, they're in a nice spot close to each other, things that you'll be using together sometimes. Um, next, if you want to, you can bind your major heal to like shift Q, but I don't really use major allow on bard. I might, I might make it like control Q or something. Let's, yeah, let's just put it on the bar at control Q because I'm going to use shift Q for something else. So Q on eight space two, hit enter, and then you hold down control and Q. And now when I press control Q, it uses my major heal. So let's see. Next, we have our group heal, notes of health, slash keybind 8 to 3. I'm going to put that on S. So that's just regular old S. And res. Let's put that on control Z. It's keybind 8 to 4, control Z. So now I can res people. Uh, let's see, cure poison, we can put on something like 8.5. Let's put that on Alt-X. You can put it on Shift-X, Control-X, whatever. Uh, let's see, cure near site. Let's put that on Shift-T. That's not something you want to cast a lot on Bard, uh, mainly because it's such a slow cast time. So I'm putting it kind of out of the way. Shift-T is not too bad for me. But it's not something I'm gonna be spamming a lot. Um, if you're doing, you're gonna be the only cure on your side if you're with like a men or something. So, but it's, it's probably not gonna be a, a used key all the time, but it's still close enough. Let's see, we have, that's it. Okay, that's it for regrowth. Now we have our buffs. We have any other things we need to comment? Yes, yeah, MLs. Okay, here's where my setup's gonna differ because I have a, a mouse with a lot of buttons. So I have my, if you see here, I have my seven, eight, nine, ten bound in my mouse, but let's pretend like I don't have those bound there. So what I would probably do, because I'm not coming down here and hitting these, what I would probably do is I would put, let's put, yeah, let's put phase shift on seven and then let's rebind it. But we want it here so we can see when the timer's down. So slash Q bind seven, seven. And let's look at putting that on on F1, okay? So if we need to phase shift quickly, we just go up here and hit F1. Whoops, why is that? Oh, that was the wrong button, whoops. Sorry, Cubine one, space seven, F1. So I need to phase shift real quick, hit F1, phased, boom. It cancel it out. All right, Zephyr, let's maybe put that on five. So it's that's essentially an instant CC. So we have our instant mez, single target mez, and then we have our Zephyr. So if I want to Zephyr someone, Boom, it's on, on five, which is a, a pretty easy reach. You know, it's right there. And you're not spamming Zephyr, obviously. It's a one-time hit, and it's done. Okay. And that's pretty much it for active abilities. Disease, we have as, let's do, let's do for disease. Do I have shift X as anything? Yeah. We'll come down here. Q bind eight space seven, and we'll do shift X. And that'll be our disease button. Okay. So now we have things like songs. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those, we have start a new quick farm. Put these songs on here. Speed and power regen and then health regen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put those on Cubine 9, 1, Control W, Control E, Control R, and then Control T. So to cast these songs, I'll just hit Control W, Control E, Control R, and then you have to twist these so they're not, you know, things you're having to hit all the time, but you will have to recast them when you're in melee and things like that if you pull your weapons out. So now I have all these songs up on pretty easy keys to hit. And now let's see. Now we have just, let's go through our buffs. So have our bases. 
Let's just throw these on here. Let's see, this con, this strength, spec, AF. So what I do is let's put these on. So Shkubine, what is this, 9.5, or Shift F1, Shift F2 for my base strength, Shift F3. And for my spec AF, shift F4. Now these, as a bard, you're probably not gonna be throwing out bases a lot. One, if you're in a full group, you probably have most people spec AF if they're not running sub pots, so you're low on conk anyway. Um, and people just use sub pots now. So shift F1, that's that's not the easiest key combo to hit, but it's very it's pretty easy. So rebuffing in a fight is not too bad hitting those keys. And that's probably gonna be something you're gonna do when you're, you're you're at home or something, so having those on super easy keys isn't super important. Um, now, if you have a nice mouse and you can use your mouse to bind things like phase shift and whatever other actives we're going to have later, then I would probably just put these on F1, F2, F3, or F4 and forget the shift, which is what I, I do. But if we're going with we only have a, a mouse with like three buttons or something like that, we'll go with this. Next, we have our mes reduction, and we have our what else do we have? What else do Bart's get? Surely they get something else. I know they get this in buff, but it's not what I wanted. I swear they get something else. You know, I'm not really gonna even bother putting this in buff up. Let's just do, I guess, our, our heal proc. So this we have to find a place for. So let's just do maybe control F1. So we have a lot going on with our controls key for buffs. So our mes reduction is on control F1 and our group heal proc is on control F2. So that's how you hit those. I mean, you combine those to like control ASD, F, whatever you want, but let's just, I'm just gonna throw them there. They're not things like if you die, you're gonna wanna put that up, but that's literally, you just hit control F1 and then you're done um, for 20 minutes. Um, you can also put it on like bar two, but I, I'm, I'd like to stay away from swapping bars if we can. All right, so we have all our buffs. Um, if you want to put these somewhere, you can sh control F3, control F4, whatever else, other buffs. Oh, strength con. That's what I thought. So we're going to actually change our control F2 to strength con, and then we'll put this group heal proc on control F3. There we go. All right, done with that. Um, things like water breath, just throw those on like, um, bar two, if you want, or even like control F4, if you want things like that, you know, just something that's sort of out of the way, but still easy enough to hit. Um, so that pretty much wraps up all of our skills we have, right? We have like, find a place for your, um, ancient resist. Where are they? There's somewhere ancient yeah, resist of the ancients and that's pretty much it for bard um now what we need to bind is our ras and stuff like that so what i do is i always put my purge on six i never hit six if you're if you like to hit six then move your purge and we'll put it on like the second quick bar but i never hit six what i do is i then slash q bind one six put that at c so now my c is my purge what I do with my mock is I'll throw it down here. Slash so Cubon 110. And then I'll put that on F2. So now when I hit F2, I mock. So my face is on F1. My mock's on F2. My speed is sound. Let's see. We can put that on Alt 1. Because that's more of a reactionary, like, you got to hit sauce sometimes or you're going to get mez. So you want to have that somewhere really quick. You don't have to like go up to your Fs or anything like that. Even though that's not a very long journey, it's still, you know, Alt 1 is probably the quicker way to go. IP, same thing, Alt 2. Just easy, quick to hit. Um, and then our rank 5, we can just put that on F3, for example. So 1, 8, F3. Now for me, these are on my mouse because I have a bunch of buttons on my mouse. But for you, it's whatever you want. All right. Oh yeah, let's, forgot about these. Our melee styles. Let's go to bar six, just cause I'm running out of cube line space. We need champion levels, where are they? Champion levels abilities, do I have one weapon? I'm using blind weapon. 
So you can either use your CL weapon or CL style with a DD proc. That'll be good for killing Zopets or your blunt weapon, which is CL style. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keybind my mace. And then I'm going to keybind my harp so I can swap to it quickly. So what I do is I'm going to do, I'm going to bind my mace. Let me take my ring five off. I'm going to bind my, to pull out my mace to shift Q. So Q bind six one, shift Q. I'm going to bind my weapon style to shift W. And then I'm going to bind my harp to shift E. So here's my sequence is going to go. I'm going to be, I'm going to be running around and then I'm going to need to melee something. So I'm going to hit shift Q, shift W, and it's going to start mailing. Shift W is my style. And then I need to either one cast, put my songs back up. So I'm going to hit shift E. My harp has a lot of casting stats. So I'm going to use that whenever I'm casting. I'm going to turn around, I'm going to mez, and then I might kite away. And then I'm going to put on my uh, speed. So I need my harp out. So to melee, we're going back up to the champ. Shift Q, shift W. Whoops. Apparently uh, we're not in a duel anymore. Let's fix that. So back to the champ. Have my harp out. Run to him. Shift Q, shift W. And then... Shift uh, E and then Control W puts my speed back on. Control E puts my endurance back on. All right, that's the gist of it. That's pretty much everything right there. So I can use all of these cubines that we just set up while being on my main two quick bars, which don't have any of these spells on them. Well, it has a few like Mach and Memory 5. These are on these bars, but we're not using, we're not actually hitting six, seven, eight, and 10. Um, other things you're going to want to do is, uh, bind items and potions and things like that. So for example, if you're using, um, potions like Omni healing pots, I just put my Omni healing on B. So if I'm mailing, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll put weapons away the V and then I'll hit B. So they're right by each other. Uh, my regen pot is going to be on N. So let's find these real quick. So I'll put these on my quick bar too, just so I can replenish them if they, they run out. So Q bind 27B28 is going to be in, and that's going to be my regen pot. I don't think I have any on my bar because I'm barred. I don't need regen pots. And then my sup pot can be on M. You can also put your sup pot on B if you want. You can rearrange these however you want. Um, I'm not even sure I have a sup pot on my bar right now. Don't play it. Um, so yeah. Other items. Things like, for example, your Crescendo Cloak. You can put that on, let's see, Shift D, for example. We'll go to Quick Bar 10. Slash Q Binds. Uh, 10, 1, Shift D. So now when I hit Shift D, it's going to use my Crescendo Cloak, and I'm flying. Okay? If I want to use my Shielding Music, which gives me a Magic Ablative, it's Q Bind 10, 2, Shift F. So this is going to activate my Cloak that charge if I want to use my I don't have this bar is not a template so I don't have any good uses but if I had like a melee charge I could put that on here and then use like shift or control something something easy to use or if you want to you can put those on your alt bar um, or your second quick bar whatever since we have a ton of space we've, we've barely used any of our quick bar space we've used what I mean 13 slots on our visible quick bars so we have a ton left and you have a whole another control bar slash quick bar three space one pulls up another quick bar up here. So if you need to put things like item uses on your control, one, two, three, four, five, that's that's great too. But I just choose to keybind those. I usually have them keybound somewhere on my mouse just because I fortunately have that space. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for setting up um, Bard. Um, I told you if you wanted to learn about group key targeting, I do it at the end of the video. I actually did it sort of like in the later parts of the mid video. So if you come to the end looking for the uh, group key targeting, scroll back a little bit, sorry. Um, but yeah, so that's that's the gist of setting up your keyboard in an efficient manner. You saw how many cubines we were able to get out of that. We'll go over them real quick. If you look at my, uh, my keyboard and mouse cam, um, these are our available cubines. We have F1, F2, F3, F4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, A, S, D, uh, Z, X, C, um, B, N, M. You can kind of hit two pretty easily. 
Um, we also have things like all of our shift modifiers. We have tons of shift modifiers, a shift modifier of everything, um, control modifier of a lot of things, even some alt modifiers down here. Uh, most of my other alt modifiers are taken up by my key targeting, which is okay. I'm definitely willing to sacrifice a couple key, um, key bind spaces for that, considering I, I don't really need them. As you can see, Bard's one of the classes with the most abilities and we've, we've done it pretty easily here. Um, if you have a mouse, you have a ton of space here. Um, I, I key bind like J, K, and L to these buttons down here if you look at my mouse. So I have the, those key binds um, available. Seven, eight, and nine are all on my mouse right here. Um, like I think my semicolons right here or something. I have I have another, you know, what, eight or nine key binds on my mouse too. So you've got you've got tons of key binds with this keyboard setup. I'm not saying you need to swap exactly to this, but maybe maybe take some ideas from this one, and incorporate in your own. Um, it's just a, a way of maybe thinking outside the, helping you think outside the box. Maybe move on to something a little bit different, help yourself out, um, up your game a little bit if you, if you'd like to. It's not for everyone, um, and it, it does take work changing things, especially if you change them drastically. Uh, when I changed to this keyboard setup, my my setup before this was drastically different. It wasn't even close. Um, so what I did is I just soloed on my Paladin for a week or two and learned the keyboard setup that way. Um, I sucked really bad for the first couple of days. Didn't know what the heck I was doing. Like I was moving around so awkwardly because I, I couldn't remember where my buttons were. I had to really think about it while I was in a fight, which was hard. Um, but after a couple of days it, you know, I started getting it. And then after a week, I didn't even think about it anymore. So it takes time to get used to a new keyboard setup, especially if you change it drastically. But if you really think about it, it's a well thought out setup. It's going to help so much in the long run, um, especially if the setup you're going from is very suboptimal. Like if you're arrow turning, like key turning like this, you've got to, I mean, I, I, I strongly recommend you, you using your mouse. Um, it's just, it's not a very hard change in my opinion. And it's just miles better. It's, it's so much better. So um, yeah, that was pretty much that. Um, if you have any questions about anything, let me know. Um, Setting up a, a gaming mouse like this is pretty easy. Whatever brand you buy, there's a Razer Naga. It's exactly the same as this. Um, this is the Logitech G600, I think. Or even if you buy one with just a, a few buttons on the side, um, it'll help a lot. But the software is generally relatively easy to set up on those. Um, they're all different, though, so I can't really do a guide on those unless I have one. But, um, yeah, if you have any questions or anything, hit, hit me up in the comments. Hope you'll... Um, maybe learn something or maybe took an idea out here. If you have anything, any suggestions for me or my setup, things like that, let me know. I'm always open to trying new cool things. And I even changed something on my keyboard a few months ago. Um, so I'm always tweaking it a little bit if I find something that's more efficient. So anyway, hope you enjoyed guys. That was the uh, cue binding and keyboard setup video. Um, it was a long one. And that was also the complete barred setup video. So we set up barred cue bars. Um, pretty thoroughly too. I don't think we have a lot of item uses because I don't have any items on my bard, but we got pretty much there. So that's pretty much a, a usable bard layout now. So a pretty effective one too, if I, if I must say so. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye.